So I think this is the thing that I like about social media. The fact that you can just see people doing stuff and you're just like, oh my God, I'm a fan from like, from social media and I've never met you. But then again, I get to do this and I get to have them honor me enough to say, yes, let's have this conversation. So I'm having a conversation with Trojan. You will know him from Twitter as the big guy, the peer guy, the guy with the dreads and every other way that you might know him. Hi Trojan. Hi, hi peace. How are you doing? Good. Stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Books are probably killing you, right? Mm. Are you just thinking about all the codes you have to write? Actually, it's less of code, more of business. Like, I've, I, I don't think I've written like a solid piece of code in, in two weeks. Mm. So Interesting. Business, business struggles, um, this compliance, that compliance. Like, just, look, fintech struggles. We're, okay. we're not even fintech, like, it's tech where you just have to be compliant on the right areas. Right. Just, okay, so we're going to get into it. Like, he just went there already. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to finish my introduction. <laughs> Anyway guys, so having a conversation with children, make sure you watch this video today, and okay? Hey folks, you're yeah, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pissy Timmy. I'm very passionate about growing people and growing businesses and the content I create is a reflection of that. On this channel, you'll find everything from marketing videos to videos about life, entrepreneurship, etc. Now this video, this episode of Founders Connect is done in collaboration with Africa Verified. Now Africa Verified is a media platform that seeks out and amplifies factual stories from reputable and trustworthy news sources. Africa Verified covers news from global issues to domestic issues to business, entrepreneurship, basically everything that affects Africa and its people. And you know what? Founders Connect is about entrepreneurship in Africa. It's almost a match made in heaven. Anyway, make sure you stay and watch this video to the end and subscribe to my channel afterwards. Okay, so give me your background story. Like background, background story, like background, background. Ah. Okay, okay. Um, my name is full name Oko Michael Trojan. It could be the last name. Um, born in Lagos. Um, oh, you grew up in Lagos. Ah, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I was probably born in like London. So I'm like, yeah, in it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was born, brought up in Lagos. Um. um you, like, I think I feel like it's a true question. I'm glad there, there's, yeah. there's lots. So, which, which school did you go to? Secondary or? Both. Okay, I went to Lightbearers College for my middle school. And I went to Macpherson University in Logan State for my higher education, for my BSc. Yeah, yeah what did you study? Computer science? Yeah, computer science. Oh, nice. So, when did you find coding or computers? Hmm. Okay, so um, my dad gave me. Um, is it Pico? So Pico, I don't know, you might not know it's a lot of P-I-C-O. No, I don't. Very, I think they're out of that. I don't think they will exist anymore. <laughs> my dad gave me a Pico laptop as my fifth year old. Like, I was 25. My dad gave me, okay, this is your birthday gift. The reason why... Oh, he, at five? Yeah, at five. So what, what, the reason why I did that was, um, as a child, I think I was very, very curious. Like, I didn't interact much with kids, but I was more engaged with, like, okay, the laptop. It was always on the dining. Yeah. So when, it's, when he has gone to work, I was four. I'll run, let me open stuff, just know what was in there, okay, close, what's in there, close, <laughs> what's in there, close. Then my dad just said, okay, yeah, have this laptop. Right. And what I did then, like, as a kid, I didn't really do much. It's not like I could write start to close, <laughs> I was five. So w what I did was, uh, I, I would type, like, I will go to school, maybe let's say we write an essay in school. I'll just try to type the essay on Microsoft Word right. or Notepad. Played games, nothing tangible. But I wasn't sure that I wanted to do anything with computers right there and there. Mm. Um, I wanted to be a pilot. Okay. You know, well, first, astronaut. Everyone wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> then, okay, fine. I can't probably go to space because of my nationality and all that. Okay, fine. I want to be a, be a pilot. And I took this quite seriously because I was really, really good at geography back in school. Mm. My mom did not buy the idea. She was like, no, fine. That was the era like, you, you, like every week there was a plane crash. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that era. Right. Yeah. So mom, she's like, nah, nah. no, my son. <laughs> so, so um, I think the defining period was when um, I was you know, when BlackBerry released um, BlackBerry Z10. That was the first time beyond the iPhone. I couldn't have an iPhone by the time. My dad had BlackBerry Z10 where they launched this new interface where you could swipe up and minify. So everything looked so gummy. Like <laughs> how did you do it? And I did my research on Wikipedia and all that. Okay, it was built to C plus plus, so built to C. Um, prior to that, I and my dad used to work on breadboards. Um, like we programmed like transistors, like blink, 
fire alarm and all that. So I, I have like base knowledge of like assembly and C. Right. So, okay, I'm going to take this more seriously. So I said, let me see, print your name, how are you? Hello, Michael. Like basic <laughs> stuff, calculators and all. Not, I didn't, not anything quite much. Then I and my dad did a weekend project and we built like a, same thing we call them micro kennels. So right. what it basically did is if you plug in a flash drive into the peripheral, you just let you know that something has been plugged in. Right. So that's... Um, so your dad is like a tech guy? Yeah, sort of. He's more of a mechanical engineer, but if he, if he, if he needs to get electrical, he, he can. can do it. And so um, I was done with um, middle school and I took a one year break. I didn't go straight into the university. Right. So, what I do my one year break is I. <laughs> I, did, I did a lot. So, first I got my Java certification. I learned Java. So, Java is like one of the languages I found it difficult. So, to at what do. time, before you just continue, at what time did the love for coding now really become a thing for you to say okay during like that my gap here i want to like learn Java. okay yeah oh so just before i graduated so i used to follow my dad to his place of work every weekend so i met um a family friend he used to work at microsoft cisco and all these other companies and he was like oh oh you, you're good at c and also he's like okay i should learn html or css because this is what people around this right. our locality use because you don't work, work on the chance anyone writing c plus plus here so he handed me out um, a hard drive that was filled out, filled with um, HTML, um, PDFs, videos, JavaScript, CSS, and all that. So I just took my time when I could to munch on it, like to learn, practice, and as a project, as, well, as a challenge to myself, I used to look at Apple websites. I shouldn't have done that anyway <laughs> <laughs> to try and learn CSS, <laughs> and I got discouraged. And I'm like, nah, this is not for me. <laughs> so I, I, I skipped. Do, not like I can't do front end, like to a reasonable degree, but I just skipped all that and just focused on like ASP. I think right. back then people were using ASP.NET quite much and PHP, quite similar. Yeah. So that's why, okay, during my gap here, I wanted to learn Java because I thought, well, not like Java is not like um, the main thing now. Like you, you don't find at least within our locality quite much, but mm. I, I really wanted to learn Java. So I told my dad to enroll me into um, New Horizon. I don't know if you know New Horizon. Yeah. New Horizon to take up their Java classes and write my Java OCA and OCP exam. My dad was like, this, this is pricey if you don't pass. <laughs> <laughs> you can't waste my money. <laughs> you can't waste my money. Well, fortunately I passed, so I'm certified in Java. <laughs> but I don't write Java. Um, I learned Java. I did. Um, I had my first fil freelance gig, so I was just doing, like maybe copy to sites for like some people that owned mm. our mission, like get <laughs> templates, modify them a bit. Like I did. Cash out. Yeah, cash out. I, I, did, I did all that. Um, yeah, that was mostly it. So I, for the first two years of my career, I didn't get like any tangible project. Mm. And this was while you were in school, right? right? Yeah, before I got got into school, right? That that started, and I yeah, I did mobile development, and they paid me thank you for an app. <laughs> ah, <laughs> <laughs> like I wrote like Naira, Naira, Naira. No, actually, it's supposed to be twenty k. Pay me ten k initially, but you never paid the other half. And I sent him the APK, and and then I didn't even know GitHub, so I zipped the source code and I sent I him via <laughs> email. <laughs> I think this was twenty fourteen. Yeah, then twenty fifteen I got into school. I was all excited. Oh yeah, computer science. I'm going to learn so much. I'm going to do this. Um, <laughs> Shocker. Form. First year, I first saw biology in my curriculum. Yeah, no, <laughs> what did I yeah. do? Yeah, hundred level. I think you do everything. Biology. Yeah, everything science. Yeah. Then CSC. I was seeing maths. It's actually that was which hundred level. The CSC were like basic stuff. Like they taught us Q basic, like the basic stuff, computer peripheral. I was like, where's the good stuff? Where's the good stuff? Two hundred level. CMP. I was seeing mathematics. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Two years has gone. <laughs> <laughs> Same story with Fortran. I'm not trying to shoot short Fortran, but come on, this is 2021. <laughs> At the time, this is 20. I don't know, but like I shouldn't be learning this. Yeah. I wasn't doing anything tangible. Like, like I could say, okay, I was in school, and I just got fed up with the system because, for example, the Fortran. Um, I hated Fortran, but I'm good in programming, right? right. So during the exam, we we're told to build a calculator, right? You could just imagine people could just do. A plus B equal to print the results. Uh, yeah. But I took, I was like, I was bored, yeah. right? I built like, the whole program sheet was like almost two pages and a half. I wrote like a full on calculator where you work there with functions, you do everything with all the finessing. And guess what I came out with? C! How? No. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, I was like, nah. I'm done. I, I just try so much. I'm not going to fail. I'm, not, I'm just going to try not to get an extra year, but like, I'm done. Right. And I focus fully on my career. Um, during um, 
the long break. The first, second long, that was 2018, 200 level long break. I got a job at Intel, mm. the telecoms company. I <coughs> was part of the team that built the internal self care dashboard. So when you lodge a complaint, the customer oh, representatives on that dashboard, they answer tickets and all that. Um, from there, like, let me say I got bored at Intel, they did some restructuring, so I had to leave. And but that was a part time job, right? It was full time. Full time. So you're yeah. doing full time work and you're schooling. Yeah. Or at least just so if I'm getting friend, by at school. Yeah. So it, no, it's just like you no know, school breaks, like for oh, private okay. school at least. Um, I think it's mostly three months. Oh, so you okay. have like a yeah, lot of time. So if, break. Yeah. So if family friend, um, Dele Odufe, he was um, I forgot Cavista. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he introduced me to the guys at Intel. So I was at Intel for a while, and that's where I got to learn a lot. I learned how to use GitHub. This was, I think. 2017, then GitHub, I learned um, deployment to servers. I learned like Real solid, stuff. yeah, solid stuff. So I was actually molding during that period. Like, okay, I can actually build things on my own now. And then that was the same time. Um, yeah, what? I, yeah, I joined the Kitchen Internship, finished, so got to the final final stage. Then the following year was my IT period. So mm -hmm. I also I did so well in Kitchen Internship. I got employed. Right. So my IT was basically me, me working full time. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this was this month from um, I think March to November. Like I was in Lagos, I was in schools, so I was my IT. Wait, so it was this actually was, full time. Yeah, work. six Still. months. Yes, yes, yes. How much? Three months from semester, then three months extra. So like full month. Right. I was working full time, and I got to work with amazing people. Um, New Fisayo, a lot of amazing people. So it was hotels that employed you. Yeah, hotels. Right. Then on living hotels, I was I, I did a lot of freelancing job, mostly freelancing. I was at Team Up for a while. Mm. Um, but it was scattered around the place. I can't remember some of the things <laughs> I did, but it's quite scattered. But mostly freelancing, freelance. Yeah. So uh, when you eventually graduated and you came out of school, what was like the thing? Was it just still freelancing you were doing, or that's ah. when you said, you know what, I want ah. to start this startup life? Ah, my my founder level was very soft. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, from your level, like, since I was not really involved in the school, mm. I started making friends in school at from your level. But I could not attend my convocation because Lara Nigeria was on the same day. So I had to find a way to convince my parents to come to Lara Nigeria instead of me right. going to my convocation. Um, but after school, what did I do? Yeah, I joined a Saudi company. So, I think um, I graduated in 2019 and I wanted to make 2019 my risk year. Mm. So, I didn't code as much for like the second half of the year. I wanted to learn DevOps <coughs> full time. Right. So I got a DevOps job at um, Achieve One in Saudi Arabia where I did um SAR management for them, Docker Kubernetes and all that. And I did that for I think five months. So you're working remotely from here? Yeah remotely from here. I scared me chopping remote money mm, for a while. This fake life. I was like wearing Jalana by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was doing that for five months, then December I met um the co founders of a bag then that, but I think that was like my first um, startup experience, being a founding member. So how, was, how did that Abeg like come together and say, hey, you know what, we want to like build this? No, they had the idea. So they, I think we met on the beach. So On the uh, beach? On the beach. On the beach? Yeah. Tomato. I need to go there. <laughs> so at first they showed me the, um, like the app, like the design. So it looked cool. I was like, oh yeah, I'm interested. But I didn't take it as serious as that. This was like December 31st. So I didn't take take it so seriously then. Mm. But, you know, heartbreaks come. You know. <laughs> <laughs> heartbreaks like make, relationship heartbreaks. Situation actually. It makes you a better person. <laughs> so, and COVID eventually, so everything just came like, you're indoors, what else you have to do? Right, you so, might as well give it a Yeah, so, there was that. That was what actually pushed me to go into it full time. Nice. But during, the, during that period, before it eventually launched, I still did freelancing. Um, for a startup that they launch, a couple of startups that they launch actually. Yeah. Then I did a lot of technical writing, yeah. I did mm. a lot of technical writing, just remembered. And I was bored, I was pushing out packages like. <laughs> I, I, I think one of my favorite packages I pushed out library frustration. Just an app. You know when people, when you build a site, people want to try and like sniff your site or try to put to WP admin so you can whitelist do and just redirect to random site. Maybe every yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so something very, I was just being random stuff. And this was like my coping mechanism because right. the only way where I can process grief or mm. pain. It's like just the code. Build, yeah, code. Or just, just, just do something. <laughs> like, I'm not all solemn and cry. I have to build. <laughs> and my crime will be like five years down the line, but like, I have to like, 
but yeah, now I started all through that. Interesting. So what I'm hearing from the story, it's like a lot of learning and experimentation and just like, yeah. oh, I got my hands into this, let me see where it goes and leads yeah. there. I got my hands to this, let me yeah. see where it goes and leads yeah. there. At, if you had asked me maybe like seven years ago or eight years ago, oh, how many languages do you know, do you write? I'll probably at least like nine. It's not like I can write them well, but like... <laughs> but you I've, touched I've it. I've thought like Ruby, Java, I'll just name them. I'll probably maybe done Hello World and done something maybe up to function. Like, mm. Okay, yeah, if I say Ruby code, I should be able to read it, but <laughs> I can't be anything with it. But I did a lot of experimentation to finally say that, okay, this is what I do. Like, I played around, made my mistakes. I've seen what I like and what I do not like. And okay, okay I actually enjoy doing this. So what is this that you enjoy doing? So I currently write um, PHP and Golang by default. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay me enough money, I'll write, probably write JavaScript. But, but what, what, is like, what is enough money right now? Come on, see, you have to keep. <laughs> to keep on site. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but like my default options, like uh, PHP, Java, is like my go to for uh, sorry p to go lang not java <laughs> sorry my go to for anything but i can probably see touch like touch other things but like by default those are what i primarily write uh, yeah interesting what would you say makes a good engineer um ability to learn mm. that's all like for you like if let's say um, i'm still looking for employment right <clears throat> if i see a job list that says oh we are looking for scala engineers i'm apply <laughs> Right, and after making the application, I'll go to Scala. Uh, yeah, I'll go to Scala documentation. Look at how they define variables, how they define function. Maybe pick up, just notice patterns, try mm. and build some, quickly build something. And for you know, a Scala engineer, like, mm. just have the ability to learn, mm. learn fast. That's all. <laughs> I think that's all you need to learn, and ability to learn from mistakes, not just learn, learn well, from mistakes. Yeah. So be willing to actually like take the risks, fail, and then learn and do something else yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And just and, and I think. If you're curious, like if you're just naturally curious, you figure things out. Like there's never a blocker. You just have to just calm down, figure things out. Yeah, that makes sense. So tell us about the peer. Yeah, co-founder CTO now of Peer. What does Peer do? How did Peer start? Like the whole Peer story, basically. There are two stories. <laughs> Give both. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the real story. So um I and um my co-founder Chiki, we had like a conversation sometime in November where November twenty twenty. Yeah, 2020, where he was trying to send money from one point to the other, and was like, why is this slow? Why is it this? He was just frustrated. He was just ranting to me. I was like, ah. me, I told him, if you build them, me, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> and we just let it, left it at that. Then on leaving um, my previous employer, um, I was free. I had like enough spare time. And apparently, I think I was tipsy. I was sipping wine. <laughs> apparently, you didn't get tipsy. Yeah, I was, I was sipping wine. And I looked at my laptop, and I thought, I don't know. I think I had a dream. I think I had a dream. Then I woke up. I saw my friend posted something on the story on the WhatsApp story, saying something about um, why can't we have peer-to-peer cross-platform? It was just mm. man, him. It was also ranting for something Chike told me back in 2020. So everything was aligned. You no, know, you're tipsy. Mm. Everything looks bright. <laughs> <laughs> It suddenly comes together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and this is like 12 past 12 a.m. I don't remember after I so I'm doing, I created a new project. It was just like, I was just fucking around. I created a GitHub organization. I created login and registration. I was just moving. I was still thinking, but I was just moving. <laughs> I found it was 7 a.m. and I hadn't slept, but I was like, okay, 50% done. At least I've done like sign up flow. I've done oh, like, wow. I've done like issuing public keys. I've done all this. Like, okay. No design, nothing, just like No design, I was just moving, moving, moving. I wanted to continue, but I ah, let me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I slept and I woke up, I called Chicky, I was like, yo, I think I'm done with the API or that thing we talked about last year. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> then then I think we had like a Zoom or Meet call and I showed him everything. Then so the V1, the V1, I think there's a, there was a dashboard before what we currently have. Yeah. It was my fault, it was very ugly. I, I blame <laughs> myself for how ugly it looked. Because I told Chiki, just do it like, just add, add, just add it. <laughs> yeah, just, just, like, just shit. <laughs> just shit. Yeah, so that was how V1 launched. Um, it was very, very crude. Because the. Like, I mean, you were tipsy when you did it. <laughs> it was very crude. Then up until when we had um, external um, investment. Parties look at it, our investor, right. they give guidance on how to do some things, compliance. So, at what point did it go from, oh, that idea we talked about in November to this thing that I built when I was tipsy to, okay, we're actually going to make this like a company, like a startup, like a real thing? Okay, 
Mm, first of all, there's Sapa, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, on, this, on the most serious note, um, so I was already out of the job, out of a job, so I was like, I was thinking, if do I really want to work for on that company? Right. Like, I don't know, I, I'm a lazy person naturally, right? Mm. So like trying to transition from startup, I don't, I don't know how to explain. You know, in startup, you're working two four seven technically, mm -hmm. and I want to give that same energy to because I, I like seeing things, like I like products just right. coming to life. I don't want to give it to something that is not mine. Like I will not enjoy using. Mm. It's, I know it's a very very weird mix. I don't know how to really explain. So it just made sense that I love what I did. Why don't I just see it to the end? Mm. And we. Chike as well loved. Chike resigned from Softcon <laughs> for six, this. For this, so that's when we knew that okay, this has to be a real company. We did the registration in Delaware. We did everything, and we started looking for investors. And thank God we have very very good investors on board. They I believe. Out there, out there, out there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're fully on board with the mission. They love what we do, and that's. How we keep things going. So how, how's it been like so far? Like there's this company now, people know you're building this, it's real, you have investor money now. And like what's what's the difference now between what the things that you've done in the past and what lessons are you sort of like transferring into this new role? And then you mentioned just before we started, like you've not coded in two weeks, you're doing compliance. Like how different is it? So I think one one thing I learned is action have consequences. Right. Mm. If I was a not my employee. I could just make make a, a mistake or maybe <clears throat> an erratic action. But the consequences might not directly come to me. I come right. to the business. Right? But now where I'm in the position where like it could directly come Is to you. me. Like, you have to be very careful. I don't want DSS to come to my house. You know? <laughs> so you have to be compliant on all ends. You have to look to, to look at things with the second eye. You have to be very sure things work smoothly yeah. and. You know, being an employee is easy to throw jabs at employers for doing things. So now that I'm in a position where I'm technically an employer, the jabs maybe I've thrown in the past, I look, okay, could I improve it? Mm. If I can't, how do I communicate to people mm. working with me that, okay, this can be done? So you just, you have to be more diplomatic. Right. <laughs> right. We, we all hate diplomats, but like, there are reasons. <laughs> yeah. Why it it, it to, gets the work done sometimes. Yeah, it gets the work done. So you, I think major th major thing to note is action have consequences. So you have to think twice before saying, okay, you are doing this. Yeah. And yeah, since we are B2B, all right, you no, know, acquiring customers is quite easy, right? right. You know, there's, there's the right customer and the wrong customer. But you know how people say, um, now God, they bring us. <laughs> <laughs> That's time, was timing. But now what we are doing with businesses is you need to get businesses on board. Mm. Uh, you have to fit into your schedules, you have to fit into your timeline, mm. you have to account, oh, they have a sprint, you have to wait. So B2B, it, it takes time. But once you get to like the right time, like when like you have a few, a few guys on board, you're good to go. Right. Yeah. And are you guys there now, gotten like the few? Very soon, very soon. <laughs> we, have, we have some people, we have some very wonderful companies currently integrating. Mm. And actually, can become very impatient person. So I'm just like, so every morning, <laughs> like, on Slack because we have like Slack on it. So like, half hour. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I can't wait for when they go live. Um, yeah. Today how many? Is, how many people are on the team now? Is it still just you and Chiki? No, I think we are. I think it should be ten. Already. See, I, I do. I swore my life that we will not go past it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, <laughs> but it's inevitable. I'm mostly developers, right? That's the thing. Not mostly developers. Oh, okay. I think the dev team just made up of, um, I think, three people now. Just three out of seven. Wow. So who are the other people? So on the dev team, there's I, myself. Um, there's IBK, does backend, and there's Camp C, does um, front end, SDK, anything you see that pops, that shows, right. he does that. Chike, CEO, slash design. We oh, have right. finance, we have HR. We have. Oh, you guys have HR already. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was, it was recent, I think that was last month because we're still going to make more hires. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you you hit that double eight and then I, you're like triple in eight nah, now. I, <sighs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm so like hands off hiring, except as engineering, but like sometimes I'm like, oh, I mean, we're on chicken, like, oh, we're nine. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've grown quite fast because of what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. So we don't want to, it's easy to say, oh, I can do this all by myself. 
on that year, on that year, aside not, aside knowing that um, actions have consequences, is learning to delegate, right? Mm. You can't do everything by yourself. You have to know, oh, if this needs to be a rule, it should be a rule, don't, because if you try to do everything at once, some task will suffer. Right. So you have to spread that out. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what's been happening. Interesting. So what's like, what are we expecting? Are you guys going to, I guess, applying for accelerators like YC? Like, what, what are we expecting from the pair? Um, funding aside, right, <coughs> getting funding or accelerator, we are actually a product driven company. Right. So we are working on like two massive features that I feel like everyone will enjoy. <laughs> I wish I could lick it. <laughs> if I do, Chiki, <laughs> Chiki will beat me. <laughs> but, um, Two massive features, right? And we currently have direct charge and send, which is what companies are currently integrating. Mm. But the two other features we're launching, what non SMEs is targeted at SMEs. I think that's what they truly enjoy. Right. So we're pushing our products as fast as we can, trying to get people on board as fast as we can, and trying to learn. Okay, how can we make this better? How can we make this suit you? So that's what we've been at. We're not even, it's not like we're not looking for money. Like every company is looking for money, right? But we're more product driven. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, how can we do this, right? If we need money, then we can go to the market and say, okay, we need money. But like right now, it's, this, most, it's like, mostly it's about the products. Product. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just for example, if we want to raise money now, we need money, right? But like, what do we have there? Like, how are we making, mm. do you understand? Like, what is really out there? Like, just push things out there before we start looking for money. That's, Product driven, product first, really. That makes a lot of sense. How do you think that your past work, right, has affected the ease of building the pair? Or has it affected the ease of building? Whether it's in terms of like the businesses you're onboarding, the pre-seed or seed you have raised, like just like the past experience and track record. Okay. Um, I think working at some places has brought the right amount of connections. Mm at the right time mm. right even in, from investments the people that invested in the pair people that we sort of met cross paths mm. <laughs> in my whole haphazard career yeah. <laughs> that's one two i've learned how not to do things it's easy to know how to do things but it's not easy to know how not to do things so you there like someone say, oh, let's do this. Or like, oh, it's, it's won't work. I've done it before. Don't worry. Mm. <laughs> that kind of stuff. I know how to handle edge cases better. I know how to handle crisis better. Mm. So, pretty much how not to do things. And generally, like, I just feel like, just be the good guy. It, it pays. Not maybe not immediately, but it pays in the long term because someone can easily vouch for you. I say, oh, uh, I, I'm not. I don't know. He hasn't built a startup before. But like, I trust him. That kind of stuff. But I feel like just. Be a good guy. Experiment all you want. It's good because you learn you learn a yeah, lot you of learn a lot. random knowledge, but it all comes together. I'll give you a good example. So um do you do programming in part at all? At so, no z- <laughs> nada. <laughs> so, so there's this part in program I because I no, actually I picked up C C plus yeah. first. It's, there's this part called pointers, right? I think everyone, every dev, I kid you not. We'll probably just read pointers and just skip it. Because mm. <laughs> It's, it's not like applicable in our day to day, at least in our region, at least. But two weeks ago, I found a way to optimize like if a class that had like that was about a thousand five hundred lines to like five hundred lines because of pointers, right? I and that's like knowledge of <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I just I just found that with I could I could, oh I could I mean, uh-huh. it was, it's not like I went online to Google how to shorten. Obviously, cannot Google how to shorten. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all made sense, right? Yeah. You learn a lot of random stuff. It all it comes back together. At one point, like my favorite or my mentor, Steve Jobs, said, You can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So just do what you want, just be you. If you want to learn Fortran, yeah, please, by all means, go ahead. If you, just do what just, you love. Yeah. Do what you love. At the end of the day, to make sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it reminds me of something that I used to say a lot. Um, I can't remember what I heard it from or how it clicked in my head, but I used to say that like, knowledge is seeds. And at, at the time when you're consuming knowledge, it doesn't always make sense, right? There are times when I've probably read a book and I'm like, oh, this is nice information, but it can't really do anything for me right now. And then like months or even like two years down the line, there's a situation and it just clicks like, ah, that's what I read and I make sense. So like your knowledge will bear fruit at some point. It doesn't mean I will bear fruit at that particular time. And that's really what you're just saying. Like the more you consume, the better um, 
suited you are for like future problems that you might yeah. actually encounter and also not just consume like build on the knowledge right so you mm. could so how i learn is so for example how i learn to go go long go long has always scared me for the longest time because right. it, it made no sense <laughs> <laughs> you know the, people say my friends like oh it's easy it's easy but to me it didn't make sense so what i did was i started building to-do list stuff like just like build it everybody say to-do list is too basic but it's actually the fastest way to learn mm. stuff because you learn create delete update delete at least you understood like the very fundamentals like then from there you can build on understand yeah so that's how i learn i don't even, sometimes i don't even read the docs to the end i'm like okay what's i learn how to do if this if that if that like do, so. how google how to query this how piece it all together that to make sense to me <laughs> right. so that's that the fastest way to learn is to build it's to build so mm. learn and build and learn yeah. and build and learn exactly. and build that makes sense. So I have a friend, right? His name is Tito. Tito is 20, right? And he's in 200 level. Right? Tito is the one at the back of the camera now, anyway. <laughs> and you are 21, right? Yeah, I'm 22. I'm 22 next month. When, when next month? Um, October 8th. <laughs> ah. Ah. Ah, what, what, what's, what's happening? <laughs> ah. Oh, <my> <laughs> That's why we connect. <laughs> I felt it. Are you serious? I haven't met a belly mate like physically in a long time. I thought I was alone. <laughs> ah, that feels so good. I, I feel like October is techies month. I feel like <laughs> you can. Is, it's she's Joyce is Joyce is also October. She's ah. like, but she's down, down, down. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's so cool. Okay, so you're 22, right? And I mean, you're building your own startup. There are a lot of people who are around your age. Some of them are still in school. Some of them are out of school, and I'm trying to kind of figure out. What, what would life look like for me in like next two years, next three years? What do I need to do now, right? So Tito is like, I mean, 200 level, maybe 300 level. And I have like two more years. What, are the, what do you think I need to do so that by the time I come back, there's a better sense of direction based on your experience, right? Doing it at this young age, which is like a brilliant thing, right? People say age doesn't matter, but when you look at, oh, I've still been able to come accomplish this in a short amount of time than most people, that's a good accolade to like recognize for yourself. So what's your advice to people like Tito, who's like, yeah, you know what? He's not passionate about programming, you know, he's passionate about cameras and videos, but mm -hmm. like, is there anything that you can look back and say, because I did this specifically at this time, I'm where I am right now, 22. Okay, um, there's this mantra I recite like every morning, almost every morning at least, like, no matter what you do, just assume you're the very best person that could do this. Mm. Like, t if you're a shoemaker, like, every morning, I'm the best shoemaker in the world. I'm the best shoemaker in Lagos, that kind of stuff. It works. I don't know how, but it does work. Because it makes you want to, because now you're the best, you do not want to mess up. Mm. You always try to so improve. So you program you your want, mind. Exactly, you want to, you want to ensure that it's, if it's going out, it's just right. So, if it's photography, if it's filmmaking, if it's um, programming, just, Obviously, you can't be the best, right? There's nothing like the best programmer in the world or anything like that. But it always push you to push out the very best version mm. of yourself. Like you always be the best, mm. and before you know it, like people will, probably will be the best. Exactly, you probably <laughs> will be the best, and people will probably recognize you for what you do because you push out quality stuff. Mm. That's just like at least on my own side. Like, yeah. That's like what so I'm, whatever you're doing at this time. Tell yourself that I'm the best at it and show up yeah. as that best. Yeah, be like do that, but don't be cocky about it. Like you just be arrogant. Like yeah. put your head down. I'm the best at what I do. Recognize that other people exist, obviously. But yeah. like just assume like I'm the best. I can do this. I can take in criticisms. I can take yeah. in advice from people above my level. And like, but just assume at this point in time, what you are doing, you are the only person that can do it at its very best. If you are yeah. building a to-do list up, right? At that moment, you are the very best person that can build this at the way it is or the way it was designed. And that just, that's yeah. just what You know what that also communicates to me is that it's a thing of don't wait until you feel like or that you're the best or you have all the experience. Because if you are learning now and you're building and you're telling yourself you're the best, there's more ginger to like, oh, let me put it out there. And then that's how you build fast and you learn faster and you keep going faster. So like, don't wait until like, hey, yes, I've learned all the skills, right? Just like. <laughs> As, as you're going, basically build every to do yeah. list up you can. You will see one command, you want to find out how to get this command out of the way. Yeah. So you always want to be the very best version of yourself. So that's like the mantra I do. Like, even the features we're about to push out, like, we, I tell, we're I tell, I sent an engineering email. <laughs> like, everyone in engineering, we are just three, by the way, but like, I sent it out anyway. I'm like, <laughs> this stuff we are building, assume we are the very best people to push this out mm. at this point in time. 
it, it's like a mental yeah it's it, the, it, the mind shift, game, but yeah. it works it yeah. actually works and that's what i apply to everything i do so. that's amazing when you're not working what are you doing when you're not coding or well you're not only coding anymore so when you're not working generally what do you do <sighs> well this is hard do you know there are some days i just stay in bed and i do nothing <laughs> like actually do nothing i don't read i don't check my phone i just, I just in bed <laughs> I'm not sleeping, I'm awake. Yeah, but when I can, I used to go to the beach a lot. So I like to like, just run away, be at the beach, look at the water, read, read books. Peace of mind. Peace of, very, peace of mind. So I can just disappear for no reason. And I'll be at the beach, I'll be on a boat on Lagos Lagoon. Ah, ah. No, it's, ah, it's nothing ah. fancy. Is like, it when I have money that is to no, say boat, come boats? On, come on, boat ride is cheap, Jerry. <laughs> just go with a bottle of wine, you're good. Like a bottle of wine. But, and oh, let me just tell you the trick is to come which you, know, you, know, you go to CMS. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know those um, canoe boats, speed boats. You know, <laughs> I, I, yeah, you know to buy them Not out. <laughs> yeah, you know to buy them out. I think it's five hundred naira per person, and like take takes ten people. Just pay the, pay the guy five k. I like pay one k extra. You will just move you around. <laughs> just be there. With, just be there with your bottle of wine, sipping your wine. You're, you're good. <laughs> no, for real. Like it's, you get what I'm saying. Like, you're yeah. good. I do that. Um, I like going to nice places where I can just escape. Not What's your favorite place that's not the beach? Hmm. Ah, this is Jesus. Yeah, top three nice places that you like. I'm not going to mention restaurants because Lagos, Nigeria, Lagos restaurants is views and inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> With terrible food. I'm not going to mention this, but I took food from like a top restaurant and I purged. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> I'm thinking of a very, very nice place. Ah, God. Actually, if you think about this, there's actually no place in Lagos. Like, there's actually no single place where you see just to the good. There's no, there's no park. There's mm. no. There's nothing. Probably my house. My house <laughs> <laughs> and your bed, obviously. Yeah, just my house. Like, I think. Actually, there's no place in Lagos. Jesus. Maybe a coffee shop. Vesta Cafe. Right. <laughs> and sometimes I do this, I randomly drive through Ikoi. Mm. For inspiration, we want to have Say for inspiration. <laughs> 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 that makes a lot of sense. Like, ah, ah it's Banana Island, it will make sense. It will make sense. It will look good on me. No, I will not buy my LX, LX 570. Hey! It's siren. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Ikoi is. I just, I, I do that like a Sunday evening. You can drive through Ikoi. Yeah, it's clean. Nobody's, no traffic. Just, we're just beyond the road, like on Alexandra Road, the long road. Come right. And that's the only time I can test my car because, fam. <laughs> like, because shoes are terrible. Well, yeah, I think that. What would you say is your wildest dream right now? Hmm. Being a billionaire. <laughs> like, <laughs> very I, simple. Very simple. Like very simple. I just want to. But it's risky, right? I want to be a billionaire, but not be known as a billionaire. I don't know if it makes sense. Right? Mm-hmm. I want to have the money, but I don't. I want to still be able to walk on the streets of Lagos. Mm. Or walking. So anywhere. people don't know you, like not exactly. famous, but like. Not famous, but like well. I just know my life is sorted. I can just breathe. Like when I'm going out, I'm not thinking of ah, this. Oh, this bill, this bill. I just want to be on the street and just, like, just chat with random people. Just be okay, but nobody knows I'm a billionaire. Yeah. That's just. Good. I like that too. So people know you a lot as Chodia, the developer, right? Beyond like work, how would you describe yourself? Like who are you outside of work? To be honest, I think every, everyone associates me with work. Even people that know me <laughs> associate me because... But how do you like think about yourself? Uh, okay, let me do it like I'm dating someone. Like, oh, I'm introduce myself. Oh, I'm Trojan. I'm a calm guy, really. Because one, I don't like trouble. Like, I'll try my possible best to avoid any form of conflict. <clears throat> so I'm usually like... Yeah. I actually just like to... I like to build. That like, will still work. To be honest, my life revolves around work. And it's <laughs> sad when I think about it. I actually hope to change that really, really soon. Maybe find other hobbies. hobbies. So I'm, Lagos is not the kind of city that will give you hobbies. <laughs> Are you going to leave Lagos at some point soon? Very soon. <laughs> Maybe when we launch in the UK. Like a pop in the UK. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I, I don't think... I, I never really had hobbies growing up here. Mm. So it's not like... My mom didn't let me like go out play with my kid, my peers, and I was indoor. So I had like few options: read books, play with building blocks, or the computer. So limited options. <laughs> so even in school, you won't find me playing with kids. I don't know. I just on in, your own. in the I, I used to do weird stuff in secondary school. I used to have like I used to buy exercise books, like notes, 
And since I'm in school, I'm not with a computer. I would draft, I would just run and write programs on like pen, hand, on paper. Yeah. It's like muscle memory, right? That's all I could do because I didn't really have hobbies. Then, yeah. I can't even think of one. It's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they use that. My friend used that to insult me because I can't play football. Even FIFA, I, I, I suck at it. I, I try learning tennis. Was, I'm picking you know, it up. I'm picking it up oh, okay. now. I did play long tennis for a while, but I, pro I probably still suck. So like, I don't really have hobbies, just <laughs> computers. I can ride the bicycle. Sure. Is there something? something? Yeah, there's something. <laughs> okay, my final question is: What is that thing that you've learned as a startup founder that you would not have believed if somebody had told you that? Well, okay. Mm, you know how. Um, you can think of you want to build something, you want to do this, you want to do that. It's very easy to say it all out. But behind it, like, there's a lot of hurdles. It's not just, first of all, coding is the easiest part. Like, mm. I don't even want to say that. It's the easiest part. The business is the hardest part. Like, mm. This stuff you want to launch, is it compliant? Mm. Does it meet the regulations of the country you're operating? <laughs> And when you okay, what are the regulations? Are they fines to are they um, fees to pay? Are they, so it's, it's, tech is actually like the easiest part. Like, yeah. As long as you have the logic in your head, like it's all drafted out, and the team can build it out. Like, how do you present this to regulators? How, how does this fly? It's mostly around business. Like I never believed that. To me, I just thought maybe just sign <laughs> signs on papers and like you are good to go. I never even thought like, let me give you, the simple stuff of just holding a wallet, your user's wallet. You need a license for that. Mm. So think of other things that you probably need licenses for. You need to issue cards <laughs> for that. So it's not just like, it's, yes, building is very easy. You have an idea. Before you put yourself in trouble, always make the proper consultations. Does this fly? Is it compliant? And that, you're good to go. Amazing. So give me your final, final words today. Um, don't give up. Be, like, be a good guy. Yeah, be, be, be <laughs> like it sucks being the good guy. Trip, trip. Sometimes I feel, I feel, there are situations where I wish like I was a bad guy. I wish, but like don't don't let anger or maybe grief or something not good consume you. Just be be good. Keep building. Don't give up. That's pretty much it. Amazing. So Trojan says, don't give up, right? Um, I think that I've learned a lot. I think that this is my favorite thing about Founders Connect or interviews that I do generally. It's not just like learning about people, but being able to like learn from them. And there's so much to like learn from you. So I'm really, really glad that you're open to doing this. Thank you very much for That's like fine. speaking to me. And I found a new bedding mate. That's probably like <laughs> the best thing about this video. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video to the end, guys. Please follow Trojan on Twitter. I'll put his Twitter handle there. I also put the peer, their website on there so that you can, you know, go check it out and see everything they're building. Make sure that you don't leave this channel without subscribing and see you in another video. Peace out.